Live from the City Building in Athens, Ohio, your local source for live city meetings, TGC 15 presents Athens City Council. Good evening. Welcome to Athens City Council. Tonight is Monday, yes. April 11th, yes. 2011. Okay. Tonight, City Council is meeting in a special session with its normal special session abbreviated agenda. And then we will go into a, ser a series of four committee meetings. We do have a uh, quorum with six of seven council members present. Ordinances for third reading. Ordinance 2611 is an ordinance authorizing construction of the Mill Street sewer replacement. Project number 252. Member Bain. I move adoption of 2611. Second. 2611 is um, going to be um, is authorizing construction of the Mill Street sewer project. We did go and see it the other day. It includes a sewer line, especially um, a street replacement, getting rid of the speed bumps, human-made ones, and sidewalks. And it's going to be a project that will probably take a good bit of the summer. And um, we're using community development block grant funds for two years, um, about a third of a million dollars out of the sewer fund, and um, roughly, and I'm talking in rough terms, roughly 100000 out of the street fund. And that's what we have um, in 2611. Is there further discussion on the ordinance? Mayor Weil. Uh, I will point out, like any street construction, most of the, most of the cost is in the infrastructure underneath. Okay, but we'll end up, and we're doing assessments on the sidewalks, as you know, as in train. Putting that coat of asphalt on it is not a big deal compared to the engineering of the pipes. Mm -hmm. You betcha. Yeah. All those in favor of the ordinance? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Ordinance 2611 has been adopted. Ordinance 2711 is an ordinance amending the 2011 Appropriation Ordinance and authorizing an interfund transfer. Again, Member Bain. Mr. President, move adoption of 2711. Second. Okay, 2711 is um, a, an ordinance that has several parts. One part is um, putting the money in the fund to pay for extra police officers, not our own outside people coming in for the various fests. Um, I'd like to point out that it's a very expensive proposition when we add our own people to this cost. Fun is fun, but um, in a few minutes we're going to be talking about a fire truck. And, you know, 20000 won't pay for the fire truck, but maybe semesters will solve this problem. I don't know. That's section one. I better not go any further afield. Section two, we're going to put 200000 um, in the revolving loan fund to be used to be borrowed by... Um, UHRC, we were down at the site yesterday, Saturday, looking at it, and this is money um, to be used to complete that project. We'll have it paid back and we'll have money. You will have money to spend at some future date. Um, we have to get money out of our TIF fund to cover um, the school's share and the auditor's fee. Boy, there's a lot of money moving around in this one. And then um, the movement into the TIF for transfer. And then the water fund, last thing, um, uh, in section two, um, we're taking money, um, water fund for transfer, which we'll see below. Water improvement desk <coughs> fund is the recipient of that um, in section three. So that, I believe, is almost everything on here. It's been so long since we started this. I forgot what was in here. But the big one is one, section one, where we're putting $20,000 up for extra people in connection with the fests. Is there a further discussion on Ordinance 27? Again, Mayor Weil. Well, so the safety director, Mosley. There was just one additional, and that was the $360,000 for the Community Center Fund for the Perfection Energy Improvements. So, yeah, Forgot. Yeah, that comes out of a fund that can only be used for that. Correct. As mm -hmm. part of the bond. Yeah. bond. All those in favor of Ordinance 2711? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 2911 is an ordinance providing for the issuance of $60,000 of water system re revenue notes, 14th renewal by the City of Athens, Ohio, for the purpose of renewing notes previously issued for the purpose of financing certain litigation costs. Member Sands is not with us tonight. 
Member Bain, would you speak to the ordinance? Uh, I move adoption of 2911. Second. 2911 is, um, we hope, our last borrow on to be paid back by the dollar fee each of us pay in the um, on the water bill. We have the EPA litigation fund, and that's what this is going to be paying off. We hope next year, sixty thousand is all we'll, we'll be borrowing. We'll be paying interest on it, and hopefully, the hundred the dollar each month will take care of it. For in twenty nine eleven, we'll end our experience with that. And with a little bit of luck, we might not have to do this again. So those people have complained about having those extra charges on the um, on the bill. It's almost over. There it is. Is there further discussion on Ordinance 2911? All those in favor of adoption of the ordinance? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 3011 is an ordinance adopting green pro uh, building design standards for the municipal. Let me redo that. Ordinance 3011, an ordinance adopting green building design standards for municipal property. Member Gosney. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I would like to move adoption of ordinance uh, 3011. Second. Second. Thank you. Um, this ordinance is part of our ongoing effort to. Um, care for our environment in terms of city operations and um, city energy use. This would require uh, new city construction or major renovations uh, to meet uh, certain internationally recognized uh, green building design standards. Um, those standards are come from the green, U.S. Green Building Council and uh, look at a number of different factors um, in the building uh, design and uh, construction that include um, energy conservation of the building, the intensity of energy use, uh, water use, so that it's efficient in, in the water that's used in the building. Um, also, promotion of um, a healthy environment, so uh, the, the materials used in construction are um, create a healthy air environment for the occupants, and there, there are a number of other uh, categories that are included in these, in these standards. The requirement would be to meet a uh, silver level of LEED certification. LEED is, stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, and it's a pretty widespread used uh, guideline that cities and uh, private companies use when doing sustainable or green construction. Do we have further discussion on Ordinance 30? All those in favor of the ordinance? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. We move on to ordinances for second reading. Uh, ordinance 3111 is an ordinance authorizing street paving and repairs. Ordinance 3211 is an ordinance authorizing a contract extension of the city's third party health insurance administrator and declaring an emergency. Mr. Member Bain. Mr. President, at this time I'd like to move to consider 3211 under suspension of the rules. Second. 3211 needs a suspension because um, the Rollover date is the 15th, and so we will be seeing that on Friday, so that's why this will be suspended, if For you agree. Further discussion on suspension only. All those in favor of suspending the rules for 3211? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The rules have been suspended. Move adoption of 3211. Second. Speak to the order. Oh, oh, I thought yeah. we already have. Okay. <laughs> Um, we talked about it last week, right? Um, seems like just yesterday. Oh, it was a week ago. Okay, um, we have a third, we are self-insured, and we have several components that are part of our insurance costs. One part is the third-party administrator, which um, we are contracting with for a year, given the fact that things seem to be in quite a bit of flux at this point in time. So, I think Mr. Sands and I. Sherry decided that we would recommend going for a year only. The difference would be 4,000 potential extra cost versus having to go an extra year, $90,000 extra cost. So it seemed prudent to go with this, but who knows what's happening in this. I do have one thing to say when we get to committees about drugs, but this is only for the major medical, and this one is doing better than it did a few years ago. Is there further discussion on Ordinance 32? All those in favor of the ordinance? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 3311 is an ordinance amending the 2011 appropriation ordinance. That is the last item on our agenda. 
Mayor Weil. How is an impression we need to suspend this? I'm trying to remember the law. Record. 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 Oh, record and the school share, I think, for University Courtyard and the energy improvements for perfection, I think. Okay. Yeah. That was introduced by Member Sand, so in his absence, could I ask sure. um, Member Kuhn to speak to this? Um, I move to consider 3311 under suspension of the rules. Second. Second. Reason for suspension. Um, because we need to take care of these things in a timely fashion. We have bills already fashion. for some of the, uh, the perfection improvements and our consultants for the record closure. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion on suspension only? All those in favor of suspending the rules on Ordinance 33? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The rules have been suspended. I move to adopt Ordinance 3311. Second. And I, could we go? I don't have that in front of me. It's closing. We could let the mayor speak to this. Okay. okay this is basically amending the appropriation uh, ordinance 1 2010. Uh, the first section has appropriations uh, amended by appropriate and appropriate balance the following sums $32,000 to the general fund for other administrative TC uh, 300. This is the school share for university courtyard payments. Mm -hmm. Whereas we just got the courtyard payments from the university. Mm -hmm. It gets loaned on to, um, passed on to the school, which of course has been waiting for some of that. And we did put some money aside of that, but not enough, obviously. I think that's they paid two years. They two paid years. Uh, 2010 and 2011. They paid early, so we didn't appropriate the entire two years uh, at the beginning of the year. Okay, the next one is 44000 This is for capital improvements for the Perfection uh, Energy Group. And we actually received a, an, invoice. an invoice for some of the work that they started. Uh, we've been sitting on that until the contract was signed, actually, so we want to get that rolling. The next one is 18000 for the parking garage for Perfection. This is, of course, coming out of the parking garage fund, um, 3730 uh, TC500. And again, we have the money in that fund. The next one after that is 20000 for the from the Ward Administration Fund, 740, 636, 300. This is for the RICRA well closing. And uh, just, you know what that's all about. So that's really why we're trying to get these things rolling. Yeah, okay. thank you. Was that suspension or are we adopting? Adopting. Is there further discussion on the ordinance? All those in favor of adoption? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance 3311 has been adopted. <coughs> that is the last item on our agenda. Uh, having addressed all items on the special session agenda, the uh, special session is adjourned. We move on to the City Services Committee. Committee Chair, Member Bain. All right, so you should have in front of you um, O blank 11, which is potentially the um, licensure movement to the um, actual agenda next week, which is the goal. And in both days, we have some of the materials that are there potentially the service director said she do you have a copy of it i do well luckily i have some extra oh, thank you i don't know oh okay all right so here we have uh it's good to know um thank what we've done this is amending um an earlier ordinance september 1 1986 a long time ago 25 years ago, my goodness. And so um, at that point, the, and just to contextualize it a little bit, um, we were going out of the business almost exclusively, the garbage business and contracting. <coughs> there were um, issues at that point with, and I'm not gonna go through the whole history, but a lot of people weren't paying their gar garbage. You know, it's garbage after all. I'll throw it in someone else's can was the mentality. So we made sure everybody pays garbage, and I think to some large extent that's going on. Although we've kept our fees very low. Anybody who's familiar with garbage recycling in other places, and I would point to Knox County, is probably $25 a month as opposed to our slightly half of that amount. And it's because we have been working on recycling in the res on the residential side. At that point, in September, on September 1, 1986, there were five private mom and pop type of garbage operations in town. And um, we didn't want to put them out of business. We just said you can have all of the commercial business. So we created a license to pick up garbage. There weren't many controls on it. All you had to do was pay your license fee every year. Um, and it was a license, I guess you could almost say, to make money, which I think probably you could have done. And 
support five families from it, but it wasn't long before, as you might imagine, um, the big guys came along and kind of took, bought them out and took them over, not surprisingly. Well, now we're in a totally different world. And um, last year we put through an ordinance saying um, that we intended to change. And um, the um, service safety director expressed a in the opinion, she wanted to continue with the license thing. I have no huge uh, opinion on it either way. I was hoping the contract would be tighter because we've had some examples of um, fumbles, and which you'll see when I'll, and I try, we tried to put some things in to remedy the fumble problem. I mean, people not paying their license and not detecting it for a while and things like that. I, I'd call that a fumble. And so um, now we're going to put the onus on them and let them take care of it. And this was not on the watch. I mean, it's not something that you're going to blame anybody for. It just happened. In addition to that historical episode, we also have the EPA saying, all right, we want commercial pickup of recyclables. And um, we have a pay-as-you-throw program, and there's just almost no way to work around it. So this is the beginning way we came up with. So we're trying to expand a pay-as-you-throw approach to this. And I would state that the new reality, which would be maybe more mixed materials on the commercial side at least, will not be in place, at least as I understand it, until 2016. So there will not be a facility that can handle mixed materials until 2016. I believe the service director heard that too, isn't that right? Um, the zero waste initiative um, people would like to see it probably in the next two years, but my understanding from the county level is it's going to take that long in order to have that. Yeah, I mean, I think um, what we have is a solid waste district under House Bill 592, and that's the reality we generally operate in. Now, the mayor and I are both on that. On the planning committee, I'm a, I don't represent the city of Athens, I'm a citizen. Okay, so one thing we're do and there were things in the old ordinance that were never enforced, and at that point, I mean, implementation is everything. I think I've said that before. Okay, so the terms of the license, we put the number at four, and shall be reduced with any non-renewal or merging of commercial haulers. Now, you can change that if you think it's desirable to have more trucks rolling the streets, but um, it's possible you might not want to do that. Um, to avoid our little pitfalls. We're, we're going to have our licenses renew automatically each year for a period of three years. In keeping with what Mr. Rumke, representative, said to us, he thought more than two years was necessary. And um, you're going, you state you're going to renew the license by coming in and paying your fees by June 15th. Da-da, there it is. We don't have to go running after you and tell you to do it. If you're not here on the 15th of June, guess what? You're not renewed. That's going to be the way we avoid that mistake that happened a couple times. Failure to submit the annual fees as stipulated above, or failure to submit an annual report, reference below, shall signal the forfeiture of the license for the remainder of the licensing period. The application for the license and the payment of fees for 2011 must be completed by 1 July. And then hereafter you've got a different time. But the next thing is probably going to be not very popular. In the process of dealing with the fumble with the non-renewed license, I believe the service director had an eye-opening experience, which is we should probably be charging a little bit more for our the privilege of picking up garbage in town. So what we're going to do is have each license pay a fixed amount, $5,000, plus 25 for each cubic yard of, of pack of capacity. And the variable cost, according to this ordinance, will, will increase annual at a rate of 8% over the three-year period. Now, we're not controlling the prices, and one of the things that really worries me, and it's something that we've not been able to control, is that I think there's great variability from hauler to hauler and from place to place in town. But, you know, we, absent um, a large cadre of people to enforce it, it's not going to happen in this lifetime. So what we can do is ask them, as you'll see at an end, what they're doing. Now, um, one thing you might say is when we looked at the numbers, we had four different license holders, and I called them um, Farmer 1 and Farmer 2 because one was the old trace. And I'm sure Mr. Farmer will be here next time, and I would not 
at all be adverse to having Farmer 1 and Farmer 2 merge into a single license. And I, you know, I think we should all support that if that's what they want to do, avoid paying that money. But the money will go to pay the costs that we're going to incur for doing what we're going to be doing, as you will see shortly. Okay. One of the things that was in there, if you go to page two, the transfer of a vacant license or the retirement of a license holder must follow this process. Um, they cannot be sold. You can sell your garbage truck, but you can't sell the, the license. Um, the service director, the mayor, could come and say, I think we really need to create another license. Well, you know, have at it. Do it. But it's just not something they can sell. And so um, it's sort of like the, dare I say it, the vending licenses. Okay? So it's a similar process, um, different from the liquor license. And then... Jay, we have to submit Ohio licenses, and we might even start to check those. Um, Kay is dedicated to one of the big haulers who puts their people into a very long contract, even though they only have a license for a year. How they do that, I don't know. Um, I've had discussions with them at various points in time, and there's about a three-hour opportunity for them to get out of the license and try another hauler. And it's just not fair. So they may not require customers to enter into contract longer than allowed under the term of the license is the bottom line. And it's no big penalty. It's just a way to kind of make sure you keep your customers. Other, others of the haulers do a really good job, and that's how they keep their customers. So, I mean, you don't have to have that. Okay, now here's the big part. This is the part that's going to be um, new. Actually, it's not new, but we're recognizing it in the ordinance. What is going on right now, because the cardboard market is really good, is that um, the, some of the haulers are collecting cardboard and not taking it out to the recycling center, but instead are taking it over to the, to, um, uh, I keep thinking Centerville, but that's not the right place. What's the name of the place? Where are they going with that cardboard? There's a transfer station that Rumpke has. And it takes it to Canal Winchester? Canal Winchester, okay. okay. They're driving it there. Well, we don't do it that way, but they take it there and they're getting good money for it. And that's good. More power to them. Another way to make money. And so what we're going to say is, and so we, we like that idea and we want you to continue doing it. So the license haulers that serve the city, largely with, with um, dumpsters, are going to be put in charge of collecting cardboard and getting it either at their benefit to Canal Winchester to the transfer station, or perhaps um, they could take it to Athens County Recycling. It's up to them. They probably won't get the money at Athens County Recycling, but that would be the way to do it. And aluminum recyclables, if they choose. And this is the first plan, part of the plan. If necessary, the service safety director may include additional recyclable materials in the next round. Uh, to add to the collection responsibility of the licensed hauler. I would assume by that point there might be some additional um, devices, maybe drop places that would happen. Okay, so the big thing that we have not had and we need right now, we're going to need for the future, is that we need to have a reporting procedure. And this is should be done annually. And no more nice guy. I mean, we want this on time and in a, in a reasonable fashion. What we want is, if they've changed their equipment, the wheels fall off a truck. We want the new license number, the new truck. We want the total volume of garbage that they did, that they collected, and what landfill destination they chose. Now, that may not seem important to you, but it is important to us because we're going to be adding, we hope, with the plan, a generation fee. And this is a way to check out and make sure that is happening in a timely fashion. The total recycling collection from the contracts that they collected from. The tons of um, cardboard collected, the destination of the material. The tons of aluminum collected, the destination of the material, and other materials as added. So that's kind of a simple thing, but it needs to be done. And then I assume the service safety director her, or the assistant or her designee will get that material to the solid waste, that information on materials collected to the solid waste district. And the annual report that the hauler makes to the city, and this would be the second part I would say would be confidential, but it still should be 
I mean, I, everything we generate is a public record, but I think especially the amount charged monthly. You know, you have a list of all the holders. You've got name, address, servants, method. Dumpster, is it not? How frequently is the dumpster tipped? The amount charged monthly? And what recycling efforts are going on? Specifically, okay, so that's basically it. Um, I know we had trouble getting information from people, and sometimes it seemed confusing. And so now we'll go back and see what questions you have. Fundamentally, it's the same old licensing procedure with a few more additional things thrown on. Um, before I do that, though, I wanted to recall with you, um, I believe when I was talking to Roger Bale, the head of Athens County Recycling, he said that on Monday mornings, the garbage truck weighs three tons more with brown glass, and that's, you know, we have the brown glass problem in this town. It's our largest item, and it's not very recyclable. We're kind of giving a slow pitch, easy throw to the commercial haulers letting them pick up cardboard. I mean, cardboard in a mass of stuff isn't that valuable, but they can get $50 or more a ton, and it's been as three times that. If the economy picks up, it'll be more than that. So, And they can take it in a dumpster. And so they have a slow pitch start to do it. They're doing it anyway, some of them, the ones that are smarter, doing it. So maybe I shouldn't comment on their intelligence. So really, the ones who are more um, tuned into the economic situation. Okay, now who has a question they want to mention, talk about, so on and so forth? As it stands, we're going to, can, we're going to see uh, some changes with this, but not too many. Yes, Mayor Lyle? Um, part of the reason for us doing this, because we're both on the policy commission um, committee, um, is that in the next five years, the next update of the strategy will require us to give percentages of how much recyclables are being generated versus the garbage being thrown to the landfill. This is the first step in gathering those numbers. There's always been a, a, a little bit of um, loosey goosey, I think is the term I've heard. Um, well, no, it's hard to get those numbers if we don't have an accurate run on them, a feed on what we're actually generating in the commercial market um, in terms of recyclables. Um, this is the first step in that process. Right now, how the, the strategy that's in place right now has to do with accessibility of recyclable, recycling transportation, transfer stations, and um, and we're ahead of the game for the most part with our curbside, but uh, that only covers mostly uh, residential. So mm -hmm. this is a uh, it's it's good that we're putting this in, codifying this, so they have to mm -hmm. uh, go with it. The only thing that I wish, I don't know if we, and Patrick's gone, so I can't ask him, but I do wish that we had something in here that says, should we not have this, should it's, this not work, should we lose, should things fall apart with Athens County, we have a way to get out of these licenses. Maybe a year isn't so bad, I don't know, but can we do it? In, you could probably terminate them, but... When you say should things change, are you talking about the splitting of the Athens and Hawking uh, counties? Yeah, who or? knows? I mean, you've been there. I've been there. It's anybody's guess what's going to happen. That would probably be a long enough process we'd see this. We'd see this. Okay. On, yeah. I'm glad for your confidence because it will be you guys that are doing it. But um, it just seemed for a while, and I think you shared this with you shared this opinion. It was pretty frightening, wasn't it? That things were changing at a rapid rate and what was going to happen to us. Now they seem like they're... They're much more stable, and it could change next week or the week after, but there it is. I, I would like you all to understand that there is money in garbage, and there actually is enough money in recycling to support 12, 15, 13, 15 people, mainly with ours and the university's recyclables in garbage and recycling in this town. And we do have a lot of special things we ask of our hauler, and I don't think anybody understands that except people have been around town and watched. And I never, you know, the cleanup, spring cleanup, which is going to happen, which, you know, isn't something that is, you would mention without kind of thinking about it twice, how much that takes. And then the real spring cleanup when the students leave, even more so. Cleanup after events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, it's not something that one guy or two guys in a single, guys in a truck are going to be able to handle should that everything change. But that's just my opinion. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify yeah. um, that um, I was really responding to an overwhelming citizen's request 
please allow me to continue to use mm -hmm. my hauler. And uh, as far as having reporting requirements on what is uh, diverted from the waste stream, that seems mm -hmm. to be a no-brainer. So. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Thanks. It looks like a lot of these changes are going to be really good uh, for the contract. Um, I have a couple of questions, and these are just sort of things to think about, I guess, before the final or the more final draft. Um, in terms Which of the, we're going to start reading next week, I hope. Soon? She wants the first of May. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I don't have any any big issues here. Just a couple mm -hmm. things that jumped out at me. Um, limiting the number of licenses to four. There are four contractors right now. Right. That's correct. Yeah. Um, and and I, one of them is double. And so if they came and said, because one has a very, remember a very two small. Two could be merged. Yeah, the yeah. two could be merged. They could say 5,000. It's up to them. Right. And you can decide. And we wouldn't necessarily have to. I mean, it's just a way to think about it a different way. And, and so I think, I think that's good. I would hesitate to limit it too low to you know, no. one or two haulers just because of competition. Yeah. Um, It'll be there eventually, there. though, and then they'll build back up. I mean, it's, 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 I mean, it's the same two. Yeah. <laughs> I won't mention who they are. Um, and then you mentioned a transfer of licenses, um, and maybe for this type of business it's not as easy to get around this type of limitation as it would be for a vendor. Mm -hmm. But I know there was an issue with uh, street vendors uh, <laughs> transferring <laughs> licenses in the spirit, like in everything except for the letter of the law. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's anything we could put in there to, to prohibit that, other than think about the language you'd want. Here. I'm open and to it because it's probably take an attorney's uh, perspective to. <laughs> well, maybe the vendors could tell you what to put in there, <laughs> or or the garbage. I I don't know. I think that that is a problem because when we went by it on the street tour, I said, "What happened?" And they said, it's a long story. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the vendors? You're talking about the, the vendors. The vendors, okay. yeah. It's a long story. Yeah, I know. You don't want to talk about it now, I can imagine. But just if there's any way to prevent that from happening with these types of contracts, um, I don't know if there is. I think they know now, except one of them. We had a change of administration and a new code director, and he didn't know that the council is supposed to advise and consent. Okay. I think, right? Isn't that safe to say? We're on vending license. Really I think. <laughs> <laughs> we, we I don't think that us. situation. Then my understanding is yes, the, they were the director was following the letter of the law. It says this, that they can't change things. hands without the advice and consent of council in the old law. The yeah. license did not go. That's why this is on the other side of the street now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're both to the same guy. Okay. But so, all right. Anyway, sorry to sidetrack. No, I mean I <laughs> think that that is still an issue because. Well, first of all, they're only two big guys, two big outfits, and so. It's Real, all yeah, realize if it shifted, of course, you'd have to they they'd have to make some kind of declaration of a new incorporation. We have to assume right. they'd have to probably change licenses on their trucks, which is part of this notification in here. So we would see a sea change in all of the whether the license of the trucks, the size of the trucks, and the name of the LLC or whatever they are, right, or, or the incorporation. So we could at that point say what happened. Depending what's on going how crafty on. people were. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'd hear about it. Um, yeah. You know. And again, the argument, the counter argument, of course, is that you talk about a monopoly. The counter argument is having fewer trucks driving around. Right. And so, the so there definitely has to be a balance where we don't have too many different entities in the city driving the same routes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And having having the choice where the price will be competitive. Yeah. Four trucks picking up four different uh, uh, commercial. Yeah, businesses on, on the right same block or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one last thing was um, I, I really like Section K where the customers won't be locked into an unfair contract for a lengthy period of time. Now we have to enforce it. And I was wondering if we might be able to strengthen that a little bit by requiring the contractors to allow customers to um, negate their contract with a certain amount of notice to the hauler. Mm -hmm. Um, could you ask the law director what we could do with that? Yeah, I don't know if it's overstepping or not. No, no, I think it's um, it's a felt need. I mean, it's not as bad as it used to be, but it's still there. I, I've heard about it. It's, You've heard about it, yeah, yeah. So, and I bet everybody has one way or another. And those are the only comments that I had on it. Chris? I think it's good to standardize the reporting on this. Right, because we have to do more now. We have to do recycling. Right. We are doing it, but we don't have a report on it. Right. I mean, we aren't doing it. The haulers are doing it. Mm -hmm. But if the market skids, we still have to do it. They have to do it. 
they can take it to recycling center. I mean, it'll be done. I think that's all you have to do is look around our adjacent counties to see what happens when the market goes sour. Mm -hmm. Things just don't get done. Thank you, Mr. Bain. Uh, I have a couple comments, and again. Uh, it's obvious that there's a lot going into this, which I appreciate. And to me, it's also accountability as we work towards being green and more sustainable as a community. On, on a side note here, uh, in section one, letter D, where it acknowledges the responsibility of the licensed hauler to see that the hauler's collections are conducted in a neat, workmanlike manner. Um, that's interesting because I was uh, approached by a local landlord on Palmer Street who acknowledged in his observations he felt that the haulers were treating the residents there um, with less regard or respect than in other parts of the community. In his observations, this was a local landlord who had done some uh, observations and data collection photography and, and had been concerned, correct, that uh, perhaps his residents were being treated unfairly uh, in the professionalism. So I don't know if that's, if that's something to be addressed in the contract aspect when, we're, when they're signing the papers as well, if it's an issue that um, needs to come up. They should contact my office if they feel that there's been an issue. And okay. We'll, we'll follow up on that. Thank you. I think that if, and I actually intended to go out with my camera this morning because um, along the street were improperly stored garbage containers. And that I don't doubt. Yeah, that I don't doubt and I, you know, And then if after the garbage truck has, has passed, I mean, some of the broke open, broken open bags and other things that just happen because it's raining or because, it's, say, because of the war or whatever, they're all over the street. You know, and most of the litter, that's what I've been saying to the, your West Siders, yeah. a lot of that litter comes from improperly stored garbage, and you can lay it right back at the landlords who don't have proper containers. Right. And I would love right now to go buy standardized containers. Not myself, thank you, but, you know, with the garbage <laughs> fees. But, I, you know, I don't know that we can do it, but maybe you want to look at that as an option. I think there was some concern that that would encourage too much throwing and not enough recycling. But um, I, there was one pile that was just amazing. There was one little bitty small gray plastic can but there were bags all over it and there was all kind of, of um, litter, potential litter and actual litter moving away from them. Mm -hmm. And with that wind that we had if, if it was before the garbage happened right. I mean, we, I guess since I could tell you who I knew who it was and I mean we've heard it before maybe the service director can hear it again but... Um, and it may be an old issue it may be... It may well passed, I think I it's a know. perennial issue and you know she can slap um, Roger Bale's hand, say, get going, pick it up, but maybe, it, but I think that some, there's a level of irresponsibility on the part of some of the landlords as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being a landlord myself, I do have two trash cans and, for my two places, and they are, according to the, I mean, they have tight-fitting lids, they're supposed to be, you're not supposed to have garbage outside, I mean, it's a no-brainer there either, but yet this garbage pile is there on garbage day. And you've all seen it, so you know it. And, you know, we've tried social pressure. It doesn't seem to work so much. If it's any consolation, I think it's better than it used to be. But it can get a bit better. My opinion is better. And I saw the solid waste guy on Mill Street, and I went, yay! It's been working for a little bit over a week now. Yeah. Super. Okay. Council so, Member Bain, I, I, we don't have a finance and personnel committee meeting, but I had some items that I'd like to be able to do oh, under goody. miscellaneous under city with services. Mine? mine is small. Yes. But I passed them something that came up. We've been working a little bit. You know, our insurance changes start on the 1st of September, I think. And anyway, we were. Uh, my question was about Caremark, our vendor of um, Medicine, pills, drugs, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I asked Debbie, on, and I've had this aha experience about it, and so I thought I'd share that with you and see if you share the strategy with me. Kathy, you can look up. It's so well done. I was, uh, I made some cookies and stuff actually during the pandemic. Yeah, I was so excited. I have to admit it. Had to do it. Had to do it. Anyway, so drugs. Drugs. What we are paying, what we are asking our people to pay 
And one thing you would notice, this is city, county, and OU. And in the process of doing this, I had heard from the auditor's office that we were having a hard time getting information out of Care, Caremark, our vendor. I'd had Caremark myself, maybe with SDRS. And then I have, now I have Express Scripts, and you know, they're kind of the same in a way. So I couldn't understand what was going on, but I had this aha experience on Friday afternoon, thanks to our clerk, as usual. Okay, so the city drug program has, um, uh, going across, we ask our, our non-union people to pay $5 for generic, $20 for a uh, retail brand name, and a non-formulary, and I, um, 40 and then um, money order, 10, 20, and 40. And these are refills? These are, yeah. She means the 90 days? Is that yeah. What you're, yeah. Okay. But you know, you look down on this and you say, you know what, there's no difference between us and OU, and there's no difference between us and county. And yet, um, people who are studying it, like I've been working a little bit with um, Ray Hazlett, and it seems like our, our drug prices are really high. And I don't think it's anything other than the one thing that we're going to do. And in fact, the new outgoing personnel director suggested that we have the incoming personnel director do um, compare and contrast, but actually it could be even simpler than that because when Greg Fialco sent back his note to Debbie, he said, there's something called the RX High Ohio Collaborative for seven for X number of dollars, you know, two bubblegum wrappers and 50, I don't know what it takes, but it takes <laughs> something, and they will get us a better price. You know, so we're clearly getting money from our, from our people, but they're not getting us the best price. And so we're, uh, you know, with a little bit of, of encouragement on your part, we can ask our new personnel director as the outgoing one mentioned, she could do this, take a look into the RX Ohio Collaborative. There's also a second one that Ray Hazlett gave me about um, two months ago, where $750 in this case, you belong to a consortium, and it's something like managed care, where you get a reduced price or a fixed price because you belong to a group. And so we could continue with Caremark. And so I would, you know, I'm going to write her a quick note and ask her if she'd explore that and get back to us. But the problem is, and the reason why I wanted to bring it up tonight is, we don't have much time between now and 1st of September, right? And so there would be nothing happening on this side, on the worker side, but the happening would happen as we get involved with somebody that would help Caremark give us a better price on the drugs. Possible? Probable? Possible, but it's an even shorter time span according to the auditor. It's August 1st is our... Oh, it was I said September, didn't I? That's why I knew there was an urgency. I got my days mixed up. So there it is. So can we can we um, go ahead and I'm going to give, is it okay to pass the new person that pile of stuff? It was encouraged by the old personnel director. So you find out what, if Greg Fialco's approach can help us. We won't have to raise any rates and we may have a savings because right now, Drug costs are getting close, if I, look, if I remember correctly from the numbers, which we'll look at in a couple of weeks, about 40% of the total major medical part. I mean, so it's a lot, but we have a system that's fairly efficient. And we're self-insured, remember, and we have to buy stop-loss stuff. But anyway, there it is. All right. Let's see what you have to ask. If it's money, we don't have any. I, I, I got that. <laughs> and I know that we've been under a soft hiring freeze, but we are having an early retirement in our utility billing office. This is funded through proprietary oh. funds, water, sewer, trash. So oh. that posting will go out in terms of uh, filling that vacancy. And at your it's request, I will pay us. I was advised today that there may be some additional issues related to it. It is a civil service position, so I'm, I'm going to look into that this week. And well, you know what you could do is go back to when I was first on council back 100 years, and what you will find is that we used to have actually career paths mapped out where a person could go from this position to that. Do you remember that thing, Kathy? You know, so in other words, um, you should be able to post it internally because they were doing it before. And I don't think we disbanded the civil service. I <coughs> work with uh, the clerk. I'm trying to obtain Do you some remember history. Do you remember that? Um, I'm not sure they were classified. You don't think so? Yeah. So. They were not civil service. Mm. 
But either, either way, I need Did to you fill that. It's, it's more than two. It's a, it is indeed a two-person job. I didn't hear you, sir. I said, did you leave me astray on this? I mean, I think I didn't posting, know. I, I, I'm I think posting it internally is a very good idea. I do, too. They do um, it at OU. But the um, issue and may be related to what civil service testing the individual might have taken for the position that they're in. So it gets a little more complicated. So if they're leaving the position, what difference does that make? Well, if somebody from the street crew or someplace like that, <laughs> that'd be a... But so I'll look into that. And but we're talking about the non-union only. Like this, it would right. only be the non-union. Correct. It would not be so. the bargaining units at all. So There should be some way for upward mobility for eager people. I agree. So okay. we're going to work towards that. If, and so it, would you, anybody be adverse if we could put that change into the ordinance if they'll say it's possible? Okay. Well, the change would be that you would post the position internally. It's a benefit the union that people have. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't it? I know that OU, when you have... So you're saying post internally first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As an option. And the county and does that. Okay. And that's, that's where, you know, I thought... Yeah. And this is really, really the first too, place so I've ever encountered that it doesn't do that. that. So maybe so we can transition to that then. I mean, because you would want that to be an option where people can move up mm -hmm. higher level. Yeah. Two examples, both with civil service. Okay. We have a contract with the Washington County Jail. They never required a contract in the past. This is for in case we need an overflow bed, as it were. Um, and uh, it's a, just now been submitted to the law director's office today for review. Uh, and it would require a resolution. We only use them when we can. It's the same rate per day, $60 per day. But they're now requiring an actual contract, and they require a resolution. Uh, okay, but it's 100 miles. Right. We try not to do that, but okay. when the jail gets full, which it could. Is there, I mean, is this for people who need to just get sober? Or? No. 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 This, this is, is for people actually, yes. Okay. Um, Pardon me for the crassness of the question. Okay. Good question. The community center, we're going to, you're going to see an appropriations uh, coming forward that we are looking at the funds closely, um, whether or not we have the paving for the community center parking lot, which is part of the um, city-wide paving. Uh, the money may be appropriated, but it may need to be authorized. We're going to look at that. There's also some question on some of their operational funds, if they're going to need some movement within that in order to operate, for example, the pool this summer. And the Northwest Bikeway Spur, um, you'll see some changes in that. That's the one that you saw on the, on the road trip there over the old railroad bridge. But there were some design and engineering that had occurred previously that we're, just, we're working with the auditor's office to clean up that project and dollar amounts. We'll be requesting uh, $15,000, Mayor, for the paint program, mm -hmm. again, to offer that this year. And that'll be included in the, up, the upcoming appropriation ordinance. I may comes indeed. Comes out of 250. Pardon me? Comes out of 250. That happens enhancement. Mm -hmm. yes. So, I, going around campaign, I've seen a lot of houses, uh, several houses that may be able to take advantage of that. I'm wondering if in the past the city has actually actively recruited participants, or if that's something we could possibly do. Usually, what uh, occurs there is code that, that actually does the initial um, advertisement or soliciting. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have uh, income guidelines, and it has to be home ownership. So you can see where there are constraints on that. So, yeah, there are opportunities there. there there's a there's a, a small number. Again, we're largely rental, and then there's a there's a number that really don't want to deal with you know government whatsoever. So it's right. always that quandary. But it it was it's been in place for since Dale Tamke put it together. Right. Ten years ago, exactly maybe. what I was going to say. And Dale used to really stir the pot and go out, and you know, it was like a supplement to the code. Yeah. So, you want to take that on? Do it. Last year we didn't do any. The year before we did two. And usually we could fit in maybe about uh, three houses, three uh, fit five thousand a piece, I think. Two years ago, I think one came in low about three, and the other one came in high around eight. So, and again, last year I, it didn't seem to be a lot of push out there to do it, and I'm not sure why. Years again, it leaves up to code because they're out there seeing the stuff. Right. But uh, for some reason, nothing came came through. We did have a request from the um, members that attend attend finance and personnel to do a better outreach, so we plan to do that. So. Mm -hmm. 
Um, there may be a possible 2010 bill. I'm still working on that. That's related to electricity, and I know we're already to April, but there was some delay, so um, um, that would be included in the future appropriations ordinance. And lastly, under city services, get ready. And this is the outreach program that we've worked with Ohio University, a collaborative effort, City of Athens, Ohio University, on what happens in Athens stays on Facebook, YouTube. Basically, it's for this upcoming high event season to tell them to be smart, be civil, be safe. And then we have uh, another that actually has the list of the different... Uh, last year, in just four spring weekends, nearly 300 Ohio University students were disciplined by university judiciaries as a result of illegal behavior. 42 of them were either suspended or are no longer here. Don't put your future in jeopardy. And it tells them, be smart, be civil, and be safe points. It's not quite finalized, but this will be coming out this week because we have an event that someone's decided to schedule for Saturday. So I just wanted you to be aware that these will be out. But uh, it's been good, good hard work and, and collaborative effort between the city and the university to try to get the message out to them. Many meetings, which I don't have to go to. She does. <laughs> Anything else? I had. Thank you. Sure. Yes, yeah, better you than me. So I'm a judge. Did okay. you get all those planning or those planning and personnel things? Okay. Um, well, I, we can get started with the planning and development committee. Um, our first um, order of business is an uh, uh, annexation petition for Cook Drive. Um, this has been kind of in the pot for a while. And um, I would like to have Mark Spezza and Diane Spezza come up and, and introduce it. Um, let me briefly outline. This is, um, we're going to talk mostly about um, city services. The annexation first has to go before um, the county commissioners, which is uh, May 10th, May 10th or May 11th, um, and they need to have uh, the the agreement with the city for um, services for um, public works and engineering services, um, public water or utilities, those sort of things, um, before the county commissioners can look at it. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. The rest of the annexation process will occur after the county commissioners and such. Um, so it's kind of a long, multi-step process. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Mark Stian. We um, uh, would like to thank you for uh, hearing our petition today. Uh, I actually have uh, several copies. I don't know if uh, uh, council has seen it. If you'd like, I can drop those off. Do you have them? Um, I, I put out some copies. I didn't make a zillion, but... So I've got four. But okay. We'll share them yeah. um, I also made a copy and put in... Uh, Debbie made a copy um, of the report from Andy Stone um, about the services that um, would be required and what potentially would be required from this from the city. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Want to uh, thank you for the um, uh, time here. Um, uh, what we're looking to do is uh, annex uh, 40 acres, and uh, the property would be uh, accessed off of uh, Hope Drive. Uh, for you. Uh, who may not know where Hope Drive is. Uh, it's uh, off of East 8th Street, and um, it's where uh, Athens uh, Metropolitan Housing is located. Uh, this property is approximately uh, 700 feet beyond uh, Hope Drive. Um, after uh, talking with uh, Andy Stone and uh, uh, several people in the city, uh, it's been determined that there is uh, manhole access at the end of Hope Drive. So again, uh, manhole uh, uh, would be about 700 feet, 750 feet from uh, where this property is. <clears throat> and um, I think what we're hoping to do here is uh, at least uh, get the process started with City Council. And as Christine said, uh, we'd like a, a letter from uh, City 
health point indicating that uh, the city can provide services to this location. And uh, we're really here to just kind of answer uh, questions for uh, the uh, city councilor. Uh, if you have some of the maps and really know a little bit about the project. Thank you. Um, Andy Stone wrote a, a letter indicating um, it has all the miscellaneous um, public works, sort of public water, public sewer, storm sewer, drainage, road maintenance um, requirements on it, um, kind of a general outline of what would be required for the development that is, is planned potentially for this um, piece of property. Um, as, as I think needs to be put in the ordinance, um, because we, we've had problems in the past with bonds and such, specifically um, who needs, who will be required for development costs from, from the last point of city services to the point of development. Um, and as, as Andy Stone wrote, all prospective extension of public infrastructure will be reviewed and overseen by the engineer and public works department and a development bond will be required to ensure proper construction. And um, he will um, indicate how much what he feels is a proper bond uh, amount. Um, and I think that needs to be um, placed in the ordinance um, because of uh, prior problems that the city has had with oversight on those things. Um, I think that generally what Andy provided um, seems you know, straightforward. Um, the fire and police review is still being conducted and we should have that before um, first reading um, should occur on Monday. Um, Could you give, it, give me a ballpark figure on roughly how much Andy thinks the cost would be for the water, sewer, storm sewer, and streets? He didn't give me that. Okay. Did he Do you have any idea? To you? We, we have no idea of that yet. Mm -hmm. We're really at the stages here. It's downhill, a lot of it, but I just <laughs> <laughs> wondered what if there was any. It seems like it could be quite a substantial amount of money. I'm sure mm -hmm. it will be dependent upon what the, the use, what the proposed development is. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. And, and again, maybe uh, I should clarify that. Um, uh, we're requesting that the property be uh, annexed in as uh, R3 uh, housing. Uh, we're talking to uh, a number of uh, uh, affordable housing developers. And uh, again, we're hoping that uh, 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 through our efforts, we can attract uh, a fairly prominent developer. Um, one of the other aspects of what we're looking for is we're uh, and again, we can't determine this. This is really up to the developer, but we're hoping that uh, we can get some uh, uh, development uh, into this particular property that would have consideration for uh, U.S. veteran priority housing. Um, again, this is just our desire, but essentially uh, we've put it out uh, to uh, probably about 20 different affordable housing developers. We've been in touch with uh, three of them. And plus there's uh, uh, a couple of uh, local developers that uh, have uh, also had some discussions with us. Now, there's a couple of issues that have come up repeatedly with this annexation process. Um, first of all is that the access that you have for this, all this infrastructure is not on your property. And I think before we, um, you have indicated that you are in negotiation with the owner of this property to get access. Um, probably before we see any annexation process, we're going to need some kind of indication that that is, is correct because That's we don't want to have to get into the whole issue of going over you know, other people's property and all that. Building an expensive road on it. Yes. So um, that would be something that, and I'm sure probably the county commissioners are going to be... Uh, happy to see something like that too. Um, now bef before when this, when this annexation process first came to the city, when it was initially discussed, um, it was, you want to annex part of the property. Yes. And um, that's an unusual request 
uh, usually a whole property is annexed into the city. What you're requesting right now is to leave a, a section of um, unannexed piece of property that's basically surrounded by annex, annexed. And quite frankly, from a planning point of view, having properties that are islands like that of surrounded by annexed land is problematic. Um, and we have discussed this in the meetings that we had with Paula, Paul Weil, Paula, all the Pauls. Um, um, about this process, um, I think that, that we need to see movement um, on the, the zoning for the second part. And I understand, you know, you have one permit application going through, but we need to see the second application permit um, going through um, to, to be able to feel comfortable about this whole process because of that island and the whole issue of that. To actually uh, answer that, uh, we did meet with the um, uh, Canyon Township trustees uh, uh, last week. And um, we presented the uh, concern that we felt the city might have over this issue. Uh, initially, um, uh, what I was trying to do was, uh, I guess, kind of create the best of both worlds for the city and the township. And uh, was trying to uh, uh, keep some of the tax base still in the township so that uh, their hit wouldn't be as big. But uh, at the meeting, I did discuss the fact that there's a, probably a strong possibility that the city would require this to occur because of this island effect. So, um, you know, again, this has been at least presented to them, and uh, we kind of wanted to get uh, the city's input here, but we kind of felt like we would probably end up having to start that process as well. Uh, that particular 30-acre uh, 30, uh, 30 uh, parcel uh, would probably be uh, annexed in as green space. Uh, again, based on uh, the uh, topography of the property uh, and the elevations we start getting into there. So, uh, although that was our kind of uh, interest and desire to begin with, uh, we do understand that, uh, you know, uh, this would kind of be creating an island that is uh, outside the city limits. Right. So. Well, and, and it creates a problem in the future because if that piece of property is subdivided and sold off, then the city has no real control over it. I think that that's an issue when the whole property is surrounded by city. I mean, it's kind of, they get all the benefit of, you know, being annexed without you know, some of the, the um, control that the city would have on certain types of use for that piece of property. Um, as... As to the zoning um, of this piece of property, that will have to be determined by the Planning Commission when it goes through in its annexation process. Um, this zoning, um, not the zoning, the Planning Commission, sorry. The Planning Commission will make a recommendation of the, the zoning. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't foresee a huge discussion on, on the request for that. I don't see it. Um, so I think that the biggest... Um, issue is that application process for the second piece um, needs to start going forward. I would like to address one other issue that you did bring up, and that is the adjacent property that mm -hmm. we would have access to. And uh, I have, uh, I did make a couple of uh, additional copies of letters that uh, uh, I can share with the city council if you think that's appropriate. And the letter is uh, uh, from uh, Brent Hayes. And he's uh, put forth a couple of different options uh, for that to happen. And again, one would be an easement through his property, and the other would be the other option would be a uh, purchase of the property. Uh, and right now, we're probably leaning toward uh, option B. So, if uh, if you would like, I can share that letter with you. I don't, I don't know if you have a copy of it or not. Is that what you mean? That's what you mean. I received that yes. in the email. Yes. Okay. Um, I think, though, before um, everything is finalized, we would have to see some kind of legally binding agreement, whether it's purchase or purchase of an easement or whatever, um, that meets the legal specifications that our um, law director um, requires of it and such. Because um, that's another... 
can be potentially a very sticky issue for us um, accessing you know, infrastructure over. You know, we've had problems like that before and such. Yes. Um, you know, we just want to protect. We need to protect uh, the, the the city services and the, the taxpayers of the city when we do these annexations, because otherwise they can get to be rather problematic, as we have seen in certain instances. Um, so we try to learn from past experiences. So experiences. So, um, questions from council. <coughs> I'd like to reiterate that there is no open space, there is no zoning outside of the city of Athens, so in order to accomplish what you've got on the map, we'll have to see it annexed. I know Chris has already said that, but the second annexation, you could really speed that one up in that new speedy process, couldn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, think that's, uh, I think that's actually the process we took, the general annexation, mm -hmm. and uh, we would probably get that uh, okay. paperwork started fairly soon. Okay, and then also, of course, the control of the pathway. One thing that concerns me a little bit, and I'm just going to say it out loud, I haven't shirked yet, I'm not going to start now, but um, we're traversing a property with infrastructure, and um, your developer or you are going to pay for it, and I guess I wonder what the interaction will be between the person you're buying the property from and your infrastructure. I mean, because you'll have a water line and a sewer line going through there. And, um, you know, potentially for the future. Given that any thought? I'm, I'm not sure if I well, understand that. I think, it's in, a, it's a, it's I think in it's in your letter. This. One of the uh, one of the conditions in the letter that's for the... That's if it's an easement. That's if it's an easement. No, I wasn't even talking about that. I'm just saying that we have a very canny businessman who's going to be giving you... No, 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 not give you. Sell you, somehow use... You're going to use his land, but you're going to have a sewer line going through that pathway. Have you talked to him about? No, uh, it would be an improvement. For yes, yes. yes, he's, he's, he's aware. Uh, I think yeah. that uh, uh, I must. <laughs> I would like to actually uh, uh, have this on record that I think that uh, uh, Mr. Hayes has been uh, extremely generous uh, mm -hmm. in his offer on the property, and in fact. Um, uh, I, I believe the approach that we're looking at and talking to him about, uh, he, I feel we have 100% of his backing, and I think mm -hmm. uh, he really has made us a, a pretty generous uh, uh, offer. Uh, that That's why we're really taking a look at the option B. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, I don't think there's any question that uh, under option A here that uh, no one can guarantee that property taxes are uh, not going to go up on adjacent properties once infrastructure goes in, but uh, uh, I, I kind of feel like uh, we have right now a good working relationship with Brent. We're going to be hammering out uh, an agreement on this, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully we'll have something uh, in place uh, fairly soon for the okay. City Council to look at. I think also um, with whatever, because this um, Facilities, the infrastructure is going through um, a relatively so. undeveloped piece of property. It should be recognized that the potential for development. That's what um, I was trying to say. Yeah. That's um, it's an R two right now. It is. It is R two. Right. So. There's no question that you know. Again, uh, there will be potential for development on there, and that may all be part of uh, the mix in terms of. Uh, any developer coming in, that he, that developer would ultimately uh, own that property. Right. So, okay. I mean, that has to be recognized. Um, I mean, uh, Mr. Stone has probably looked at this with, with, um, in his review of the development infrastructure that needs to be put in. I mean, he does all these formulas, and I'm not going to worry about what. So, um, and same with with fire and police. I mean, we have issues uh, before where people have not known what they wanted to do on on potentially. Um, annex city and that pro propose you know that could pose a problem because if you have huge amounts of development that can overwhelm but this area is fairly well um, serviced I think because of the apartments that are already there and such so and I so. would like because again I don't know how much uh, people know about uh, uh, the property that uh, we would get, be gaining access through uh, the 17 acres is zoned uh, R2, um, 
and uh, the city uh, does have an easement through that property. That's uh, uh, it's a whole road that takes uh, city workers, etc., up to uh, the oh. reservoir. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a shared easement there to begin with. Right, and that needs to be identified in any legal documents that are produced out of out of okay. whatever purchase or easement. Uh, documentation that you produce with, with the Mr. Hayes. Continue. Yes. yes, but it needs just to be identified so that, yeah. that there's no question or or anything. I, mean, I would it. assume that uh, I would assume that easement it, it is in his deed again. It would, you know, it would pass with the sale of okay. the property. So, right. uh, you know. it's always good to identify. Yeah, we'll have, yeah. So, so, any other questions from council? Uh, yeah, just quickly. Um, I'd actually like to see the property in person if possible. Sure. Um, so maybe you can contact our uh, contact Debbie and ask if there might be a time you can offer to, to give a tour if we're interested. It's a little uh, soggy right uh, now. We'd, right we'd now, be we'd be happy time. to. Uh, the, yeah. the, uh, the hall road uh, is uh, really in need of a little work right now. Uh, I can drive my four-wheel drive vehicle across it. Uh, uh, but there... Um, it's, it's really the only way to yes. get in there right now. Uh, I'll tell you so what, I'll, I'll contact you. Um, and I'll be ha we'll be happy to do a, a personal tour. Uh, uh, hopefully, if we get uh, an extreme of days where it's not raining, uh, it will be uh, a much easier show. It happens, happens in the spring. It's not raining, it'll be hotter than the blazes. tomorrow. Okay, so the, really the next step is for council to uh, tell them what services that Right. Come with annexation, right. and uh, and you want the condition of the other rest of the parcel being annexed in, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will introduce an ordinance next Monday. I know that that you would. Um, we will probably either have to have a special session or. Um, we will. We will. We'll have the cities for commercial garbage anyway. Okay, we'll have a special session. This will be put on any special session, so it will be read for three times before the um, county commission. Public. I think that Lenny Eliason said that it's a public hearing on the. They said the a public thing. hearing for May 10th. Uh, uh, we they have to have it 20 days before. Yes. <coughs> 20 days before. Uh, they're going to use suspension. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to have to put an emergency clause. But it's not the. It's just the public. It's not for the annexation itself. It's just for the. The, this is more of what the commissioners need in order to, to have their hearing. It's not the annexation itself. No, I understand that. She's so done this before. She has done this before. What's your magic? Yeah. So what you what's 20 days, days before the next week? I don't either. Where's the um, What's it, you, you really really What's it, what are you talking about? If you read it on the 18th for the first time, and then the second would be May 2nd, and it, but you need the emergency clause suspension, yeah. all that. Okay. And already hit May 10th. In order to meet your deadline on commercial garbage, though, we'll have to have a special session. Oh, okay. We will read it next Monday for sure. Okay. okay. And we will put an emergency clause. Um, that's okay with the mayor and, since, and so. uh, we'll uh, we'll probably uh, get started with the uh, annexation of the other piece and uh, uh, further discussions with Brian Hayes. yes um, I think that the council will feel much more comfortable if that annexation process had already been started when okay. we started reading this okay. from the discussion that we've had so any other questions so, okay I have no miscellaneous. Does anybody have miscellaneous? Just one. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Just one miscellaneous. Uh, nothing to, you know, we passed a resolution to recommend some language for Internet Cafe. It should be coming at you sooner than later. Okay. okay. Great. Just so you know, the Planning Commission, the City Planning Commission. Great. I'd love to see that. Um, the other thing is, when is the spring cleanup? That's kind of planning and development. That's planning and development. <laughs> Last week in services. April is spring cleanup, 25th to 29th, right. and then the 30th is the hazardous waste right. pickup. So. For, um, That's planning. Plan yeah. ahead to okay. get rid of your garbage. Mm -hmm. so. And beautification day, of course, is the 16th, Saturday. next Saturday. Next Saturday. Great. Thank no, you. I'm sorry. That's this Saturday, Mary. This Saturday. <laughs> That's the next one, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. That's okay. the end of the Planning Development Committee. So.
Transportation. Thank you. Now we have the Transportation Committee and we have three items tonight to discuss. The first one of which I'd like to show you several photos. Uh, this is just for preliminary discussion at this point to alert council members if you can. Oh, it's going to be on TV? It should be coming at the TV. This is the 1996 Ford. Uh, it's a salt truck. It is used all year. It's used for dirt as well as salt. And uh, we do have, I think, a few photos showing the condition of it. Um, it has rusted. Um, the front of the bed is in bad um, uh, situation. The underside has no guard left on the drag chain. These are some of the comments that uh, Street Director S uh, Stone made to us the other day to alert us to this. Uh, we do need to at least be thinking about it, beginning discussions, looking at to the city budget to see if we have um, uh, money available to be able to work towards the purchase of this. The salt truck is obviously used during the winter time. The problem is, is that the orders for such trucks need to go in months ahead of time. So that's why we'd like to uh, begin some of the discussions now. So, uh, and Andy does not have money in his funds. Okay. Uh, no, we, that's why we need to work with the auditor's office to identify this and to see what might be possible yet this year and we'll work with the service safety director with further discussions. Are there any questions, comments? Council Member Did Coon. you mention the price? Did I just miss that? Uh, I think yeah. you missed the price. Yeah. 115 dollars to $120,000. I thought it was 50 dollars. No, that's a lot of money. <laughs> So, um, I haven't bought Either way, this vehicle will be removed from service. It is no longer safe and cannot continue to function. So. Okay, that's, that's the clarification I was looking for as well. I wasn't sure if there were engine issues or if there's anything that could be fixed or replaced to keep it on the road. I'm rather thrifty, so if we can fix something rather than replace it, I always prefer that. But I believe it's it is extended its useful life. Yeah, okay. so. 15 years. <clears throat> yeah. Council Member Gosney, did you have um, any questions? Yeah, I was just going to ask if the if, um, city's open to a used one, if there are used available. Although salt trucks get a lot of intense uh, use, so I don't know if, if that'll be best, but just to explore in case finances restrict what we can afford. That's a good suggestion. I appreciate that. Okay. I was going to my I was going to say to Allahu the Nation Cities had an article about. Um, a garbage truck that used hybrid technology that was better than a regular hydraulic truck. So I'm not suggesting we have to get a green one this time, but I think that that whole thing is changing, and we'll see more of it. I'll send you that article. It's pretty interesting. I sent it to Andy. Okay. The second item is to alert you that we will have disposal of some city vehicles that are no longer, like the salt truck, no longer usable by the city. And we'll be bringing forth an ordinance and that will describe those vehicles. And they may likely be from s several departments. And some are already listed, right? Yes. Because of the, the police mm -hmm. work on that. The impound, you mean? Yeah, yeah right. they're already done, I think. On the, the vehicles, will we again be um, have the option of giving these to local other local governments that may need them? Is, is that something that... Actually, we talked about that with the bus systems, but I have yet to do it. And, and most of the time, really part of the question I have there is um, the fact is I had to go get money from you guys last year for the bus systems. So I have kind of gotten reluctant to just give them away. I still have that open if somebody, uh, I'm in conversation with Lance Rep, uh, the mobility coordinator for the county. Mm -hmm. um, there's always been an ongoing discussion of trying to extend services out to the outside of the city limits. Right. Uh, we. We know we can't do that. We don't have the resources to do that. But if somebody would say, if there was an organization that would say we can pick up and do that, I would, I would entertain that concept of using the buses for that. Uh, other than that, and that's the only reason why we haven't put them up to auction. We're talking about doing sealed bids otherwise. Sure. Um, but there's not a lot of dollars in there. Um, but at the same time, every little bit helps, considering we had to run to you guys for 100000 last year. I mean, up to last year, when we, last November, December, when I said we need more money, I was perfectly willing to trade it off. But at this point, I'm a little bit more reluctant. Mm -hmm. But we did do a police car, right, to Albany? Did. Yes, we you did. did. Mm -hmm. Council so We're very happy with it, I think. Right. Yeah. Good. Okay. So things that we can't get much money for in, a, in another way. Yes. Uh, I think we should still be open to it. And there was savings because they didn't have to decommission it, which was a, sort of a win. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thanks for the suggestion on that. Okay. The, th the third item that I have under miscellaneous uh, concerns the Carriage Hill Bridge, and we've described this um, at other committee meetings. But we're now ready, we will be moving forward with some of the construction costs for this project. It's approximately $200,000 total. <coughs> the work will be uh, completed this summer. Over one, possibly two days, as uh, Director Stone reported on our street tour. And you might also remember that the costs that the city will incur for this project, we will be able to use as cost share on our Oxbow uh, repair, uh, repair the Oxbow bridge that's also that it will occur in, in the subsequent year. Okay. And again, and this is just another improvement on that Rich and then Car a Carter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. we're working our way down the street, right, and up the street, I guess. Too. Mm -hmm. Uh, any other miscellaneous items for transportation? No. Okay. no. Thank you. The ladder truck is on the safety services committee agenda tonight. Um, there has been a delay in going forward with the purchase of the ladder truck for a couple of reasons. Yeah. One is that we've been waiting for a response from Ohio University on our request uh, that they contribute toward the purchase of the ladder truck. I did check with President McDavis's uh, office and was told that they are still in the process of gathering budget information. And um, so hopefully we will get good news from them if you're an optimist. Um, the other reason is that it's just a real tough decision to go forward with this major purchase in our financial uncertainty. However, um, we have, I think we have a responsibility for the safety of our citizens, and I think we do need to go forward now. And it's my understanding that if we don't take some action in April, that we lose the 2010 pricing. Is that, is that correct? Yes, actually, Stephan is um, the price quote we've received has uh, been held for about a year and a half. They had increases um, already in January and we're still, so they've asked either movement by the end of April, 1st of May, or we do, we no longer hold that quote. And it's beyond the 60 days of which they already supplied. Yeah. So we've been pretty lucky that they've been yeah. willing. They've willing. been considerate in that sense. They've been very considerate, right. Um, we've talked about several ways of, of doing the financing. There is a council member who has mentioned to me several times that um, he thinks we should just borrow. The cost is uh, $1.3 million. I think it's 1.05. It? It's 1,030,000. Yep, it's done. What's the? It's well, 300,000. 1.03. 1.03, yeah, right. Yeah, I, that's what I meant 30. to say. Okay. <laughs> and we can afford 30, And we can afford the 30,000, <laughs> right, exactly. A little difference. That's, that's the back wheel. <laughs> yes, probably. And, if we're lucky. And so that is, has been we'll his recommendation all along that we, that we borrow the million and uh, use the mon keep the money that we've set aside for payments and toward that obligation and that sort of thing. So I would like to go forward with an ordinance on Monday. And um, so I just, I was sort of hoping the auditor would be here to, I know that we can get a terrific interest rate. And we'll have to roll it every year. And well, yes. Well, right. okay. So if the economy so improves. If the economy improves um, and if we get some help from Ohio University, um, I, I spoke with the uh, auditor in the hallway, and, and she indicated we'd work this week towards seeing what uh, some options and discussions with her office to see what may be the best uh, scenario for proceeding. So. Do, okay, are there any questions? Um, do we know exactly how the um, budget is looking from the state level? <laughs> I know that they put the budget out, but it's so convoluted that it's difficult to understand. And then there's a referendum, too. Right. I mean, uh, when in our conversations with the auditor, and I think she shared with you, she they actually built in a greater cut that did not occur this year. 
Um, will we survive 2011? Looks like it. With much money? No. Mm -hmm. It's 2012 in the future. That's some serious, serious uh, there's considerations have to be given in terms right. of the state stuff. tax was going up for, for the vote this week. And it's going to be gone. Yeah. And so. every indication is that's not, that's not going to slow down. I mean, right. In the and then the local 25 the other 25 percent for the local funds and then it right. uh, was it tangible personal property tax i know that the, the school districts have been rather um hammered. hammered and they haven't been able to figure out exactly how hard the hit was going to be because they said that the trying to read the budget was so difficult and i'm wondering if it's more straightforward with or whether it's on six different you know, Excel spreadsheets like it is for the mm -hmm. school districts. I guess I would defer to the auditor's mm -hmm. office for that. Sorry. I did ask a question this afternoon about the budget and the, and the local, or the cuts of our local funds. And the auditor's office, as I understand it, has taken a more conservative approach. And so they took the, you know, we're going to anticipate this much in cuts, and they're at this point right. likely to get less. It doesn't mean it can't be adjusted later on in the year, but. Um, they have been fairly conservative about it. Next year is more of an issue. It's mm -hmm. just, you yeah. know, kind of putting so much of our financial eggs in a basket. I guess it's, it's a question of whether that 600000 is going to be more useful to us as an emergency, um, yeah. you know, kind of buffer and go, mm -hmm. and go ahead with the go ahead with the borrowing because you know, I mean as, as you say with you know you can't borrow for retirement but you can borrow to go to school so yeah. <laughs> there's certain things you can borrow for and certain things you can't right so Nancy <clears throat> I'm pretty fiscally conservative but I think when you think about our obligations to the people who the fire department serves in multi-story buildings, we don't seem to have a bunch of chances. We could say our old fire truck, which is kind of rickety, we could just park and only call it in when we need it. But what if we need it and it's not there? And it's not there, right? And it just seems to me that, and I wish Ohio University were more forthcoming with the money since most of the, of the property is there. I just, as a parent of children, I can't see not having that option. I mean, if we parked it and said we're only bringing it out when we need it, we can eke five more years out of it, I'm afraid something awful will happen. And that's the part that worries me. And a million dollars is a lot of money, but the way, it's more money than I have, but the way it's, um, <clears throat> the way it's set up with the bank and our local bank is so good to us where it will al allow us to, I mean, we could pay virtually the interest in a little bit on the principal. We did that with the uh, Oak Street or Oakmont Oak station. And we could then come back and pay a bigger amount if things get better, you pee, mm -hmm. and, you know, get do it that way. I just don't know. What, I'd rather have it, take our 640 because I know it'll disappear and the um, universities to share as, we, as I see it and pay for it outright, but it's not probably going to happen. But I still want to do it because of the obligation we have to the less protected people. Right. The safety issue? The safety issue. <coughs> Thank you. It looks like the mayor has a comment. Yeah, we can I, go either way. I, too, believe that we need to move forward. And um, if anyone from the university wants to do some extra reading, too, uh, I believe it was Alex Stuckey from The Post who did a wonderful uh, job. And it was, it was uh, a big article, and she did a lot of extra research on contacting various uh, universities um, that have supported a uh, similar situation, have supported the purchase of trucks. Um, and again, the discussion is always that they recognize there's a benefit, there's a symbiotic relationship between the community, the, the university, and the city, and, and that it behooves and benefits everyone. And in addition to the, the community members that we want to make sure that we're providing safety to as well is, is our city workers and, and our fire officers. So that too is, is, is huge and essential to make sure that they're well equipped and that they're prepared to do their job at, um, in, in the safest manner possible. So I definitely support. Um, I, I know that we've been um, patiently waiting to hear, and we're working on things. And, and um, it, it may just be time that we get locked in with this purchase and take care of business. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Sure. One more last. My concern is that the university is going to say, "Oh, well, they've already gone forward with this. 
and that now they are kind of let off the hook of responsibility. And I would really like to see, um, you know, part of it, especially because a lot of the other funding that, you know, we've been talking about putting however much money towards Palmer Fest and all those other um, kind of free rider fees that the university is actually getting from the taxpayers of the city. And so, I, you know, I, this doesn't mean that the, the university is getting let off the hook. That Exactly. Really, so. And, and we have been waiting for a response from them, and we will be happy to accept their contribution any time. Definitely. And convo, the convo could even be there, right? Exactly. Exactly. That so this, this, this purchase will benefit the everybody. The sports party, then. Yes, the sports party. Yes. So... You know, I'm really stretching it. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is absolutely a necessary purchase in my mind, yes. um, as others have said. Um, you know, being that we have saved some money for it, my oh. personal preference would be to see at least some yeah. form of down payment on that, so that we're not just kicking it down the road. Um, Me too. You know, if if the budget does get somewhat better, I don't think it's going to be a huge improvement, and our costs are going to continue to rise regardless, as a city. Um, yeah. And so, my preference would be to see some of that money um, go towards the initial purchase of it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mayor, did you have a comment? Um, I would say move forward with it. Um, the fact is, if we lose the quote, we'll probably go up another fifty to sixty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. If we take out a loan for a full million, uh, and we're talking about uh, right now, our rates are about one percent uh, coming from the bank. Uh, that's ten thousand. So we'd save ourselves just by starting it over. We still have the 650, six hundred forty in reserve, if need be, to to cover it. As you say, to, to pay it off early if need be, or most of it off early and reduce that, uh, depending on what the university does. Um, but we'd also have some emergency funds in case something else happens. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and you're, you're right, it is a, it is a safety issue here. Yes, right. In any scenario we're looking at, we're looking at borrowing. Uh, even if the university were to agree the exactly. $50,000 per year, we don't, we don't have the full one. Right, so we were, we were going to have to borrow regardless of what of what happened with the university. And so. what Debbie put in the minutes that we understand that they're going to postpone the request for purchasing bumper trucks. Remember the chief and yes, um, mm -hmm. what's his no name? More toys. Mr. <laughs> Captain, Gil Captain Gilbert both oh. talked about how you couldn't move that forward. And so, I mean, I, it'll it'll be easy to forget. In a couple of years, when that nice red shiny truck is there, but just remind them we're not going to buy a new pumper truck right away because they are pricey, also. Yes. All right. We'll go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any, is there any miscellaneous? I don't have any miscellaneous. No. Okay. We've done it all. Safety is adjourned. Okay. Hey, Paul, this isn't that bad. Okay. Oh, no. That's just, oh, the.